Read junk. Read junk. Read junk. Podcast. Read junk podcast with your host, my guy. Hey everybody, it's the Read Junk Podcast. I'm your host, Brian Krimko. This week, I talk with artist Matthew Linham, who you might know from his insanely popular new wave art. Um, he does like new wave Christmas ornaments with like clever puns and things like that, really funny stuff. Uh, he does Valentine's Day cards, Halloween cards. He does paintings. Uh, he's at conventions all the time. I met him last year at the New York Comic Con. Um, and I really just wanted to pick his brain a little bit about the process and just art stuff in general, like copyright infringement and shirt stealer stuff, things like things like that that I experience as well. Um, we talk about the 80s, new wave, some hair metal, and just new metal, I guess, too. We talk about that, like Limp Bizkit. <laughs> and uh, we just talk about like like lots of other decades of music. Uh, but most for the most part, it's a lot of 80s, new wave discussions. And then a little bit later on, we talk about ska and then uh, what's next for him. Not sure what's next for the podcast, but I have a few more people that I'm going to be uh, talking to in the coming weeks. Not sure if it'll be next week or the week after, but I got new episodes coming soon too. But for now, enjoy my chat with Matthew Linham. So I'm talking with Matthew Linham, right? <laughs> yeah, that's correct. <laughs> um, and uh, you do a lot of awesome new new wave like ornaments, artwork, paintings. Um, but you've kind of been venturing out into 80s and, um, movies and stuff as well. Um, what really got you into doing new wave artwork? Like, how did you, were you just because you're a fan of the music? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I just grew up really listening to, uh, to the whole genre of, of all of that. I mean, I don't know, like my, uh, my dad was really, really into it. And, uh, growing up, um, he would just play it all the time. I would kind of be fixated on it as like a little kid and watch like VHSs of all the music videos. And then I would be fixated to like MTV and, uh, just every, like literally every piece of it. It's like the one, even when I branched off, it started kind of like rebelling against my parents. <laughs> um, I still really kind of. I never, I never ever hated new wave music ever at any phase in my life. It's the one thing that has been completely consistent and not like any sort of phase. Now, were you were like, were you, you weren't born in, were you born in the eighties and grew up in the nineties? I, I was born in the eighties. Yeah. Oh, okay. But, um, but for whatever reason, I have really, really vivid, clear memories of watching certain like music videos and being like, I remember I remember my dad had like a, a Gary Newman, like VHS oh, wow. and um, it had the video for cars on it. And it's, it's funny because the videos were such crap back then, but, but they're so iconic though and memorable. Well, the people are just so interesting that you didn't need an actually interesting music video. Like you just literally put Gary Newman just front and center and just film him. And it was more interesting than like 90% of music videos put out now with like huge budgets just because he was such a weird kind of force just when you would watch him. I remember just being completely fixated by it from from a really early age. I was obsessed with uh, – have you ever heard of Erg, a music war? Um, no, I'm not sure, no. Well, it's it's this crazy concert, and I, I would I would look it up if I were you. It's on YouTube and everything. It's amazing, but it's there's it's like all the best live performances from like seventies, eighties, like new wave, and I was obsessed with it. There was like a performance by uh, Orchestra Maneuvers in the Dark, and uh, doing the Nola Gay, and I remember being completely obsessed with that performance too. And like the police is on there, and Dead Kennedys, and Oingo Boingo, and um, well, dead candy. All kinds of weird language. groups. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, I said I was like, oh, we mentioned dead Kennedys. I'm like, yeah, they were an early favorite of mine uh, growing up. The dead Kennedys. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, but it's just, I mean, it's just the uh, personas of these these front men is the thing that I've I've always been the most obsessed with. And I mean, I was a front man in 
banned for years because of it too. But like you have people um, like Jello Biafra is just like, can't take your eyes off the guy. Um, you know, especially when he was in his prime, he's just such like a, such a crazy weirdo. You weren't sure, especially as a little kid, like you weren't sure if he was going to like jump off the stage and like kill somebody or, or what. Yeah. But, uh, I remember, I don't know. I remember seeing Jello for the first time. Uh, I think it was like, that that San Francisco club that closed down, it was like the, but it was like one of their full concert videos, and then him acting out all of the performances. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> like, it's like oh, he's yeah, so crazy, yeah. but I mean, it's like you can't keep your eyes off him, like you said, yeah. Yeah, it's it's nuts. I mean, there's just you, there's just a list of them. It, it's, it's weird. It, something something happened in the '80s that, um, and I I truly love every decade of music for different reasons. Um, but the something happened in the eighties where I don't know why, but just characters just came forward. Like people like boy George or Cindy Lauper, or people that like, they're almost like more well known than like the music. in in a lot of ways, um, they're just, they're almost like cartoon characters. And, um, I don't know if we got away from that a lot, which isn't necessarily a good or bad thing. It's just different now. Yeah, it's um, very different. But uh, as as somebody that loves the King and stuff, I mean, I think that's probably why... Well, I mean, I love the music more than anything, but just putting certain characters like Adam Ant to his music, like, it, it enhances the music to me also. Like, it, it makes me want to listen to it even more when you see somebody as that strange and a character like Adam Ant that doesn't really quite fit like anywhere. Like nobody before or since really sounds like an Adam Ant or um, I don't know, even, even just the amount of people that have even attempted to sound like Susie Sue since, but just can't quite cut it. Like there's, they just, for whatever reason, the like mid seventies to like the mid eighties, you just had these crazy, strange characters just come out of nowhere, and I've—it's I, always still mind blowing to me. Like I've never gotten sick of it. I don't get bored of any of it. I can watch and still find music videos I've never seen from half of these people. And uh, I mean, just the songwriting was really good too. But um, just—I don't—I don't even know what it was. I, I really think you had all of these kids that were influenced by like the songwriting of the Beatles um, and bands like that. And then all of a sudden David Bowie came along and uh, kind of created like this crazy image. And then you just had all of a sudden all these kids that grew up on that were like, you know, teenagers to into their twenties in the seventies and eighties. And it just created these great songs with interesting characters. Yeah, I mean, I that '80s is definitely my favorite genre of, uh, well, it's like our decade of music. Um, yeah, because I, I I'm an '80s kid, so I grew up listening to all that stuff. Like my stuff was, I was more of like a metalhead, um, but I also li- listened to a lot of the, uh, the pop Look, stuff. Even as well. even like uh, metal, which I never I've never been a huge metal fan, but I I always try to look at every genre and, and at least understand it. So I don't just sound like an ignorant, like idiot kind of hating on, you know, certain genres of music, but like with metal music, I know tons about it. I know all the songs I've listened to it. It's not my favorite genre, but in the eighties, once again, like there were characters. Like if you look at, you look at like a Motley Crue, for instance, like you get, they're, they're almost like walking cartoons. It's like, uh, I, and I think kind of like the, um, in the same vein as uh, as New Wave, um, you had people that I think you know were influenced by like Kiss and things like that on that side. Kind of understood like just the the image of everything from music videos and MTV kind of beginning. Um, I think that, I just think the image of all of these people mattered so much back then. It was a, it was a way to sell it, honestly, which I. That's that's great to me. I, I never bothered me. I don't think it took away from the music. I think it just, I think it just enhanced it. Honestly, it made it memorable. Like that, there's so many different types of people that they look all differently. I think I think MTV helped it uh, create a lot of those images for a lot of those people back in the day. If 
you know, like the hair, the glam metal, the glam metal. I, I mean, I listen to Alice Cooper and Guns N' Roses, Guns N' Roses, Ozzy, like that kind of stuff. Yeah, I love Alice Cooper's one of my favorites. Yeah, and he I, was definitely I mean, one of my favorites too. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I literally one of my favorite albums of all time is uh, is um, was it Billion Dollar Babies? Oh, yep. Yeah, I like yeah, Constrictor. Um, um, some other ones, yeah. Yeah, I just. I don't know, man. There's something something about that whole uh, decade of music too that has always been mind blowing to me. It just feels, I, I don't know, kind of puts you back in a time for, which for me I wasn't born yet. So for me, yeah. it like brings me to a time that it, it, I don't even. It, it's weird. It's like getting in a time machine and that just the warmth of the way like they would record things back then, and and it just. It, it sounds so much different than the '80s too, and and I love the contrast of of all of that. I love I, really any. If you give me any decade of music, um, I have so much I love about every single decade. And for me, like 1975 to '85, probably my favorite ten years. And then a lot of people don't. They, they just don't know. They A lot of people gave up after that, especially a lot of the people that follow me online and everything. I, I hear a lot of, um, a lot of like, oh, the music died, like good music died after like the 80s or whatever. But I truly think that 05 to 2015 is my second favorite decade of music. Just mm-hmm. there's so much good music from 2005 to 2015 that, it almost like rivaled the eighties to me. The only difference is that they, they didn't have MTV and things like that to really, I mean, MTV and all the music channels just kind of gave up at that point. So because of that, you kind of had to go out and find it on your own or go out and find yeah, it through like uh, music blogs and, yeah. and things like that. That's, that's an interesting take. Uh, I don't know if I would, I don't know if I would agree, but everyone's got their different opinion. I mean, no, most, most people wouldn't agree. Yeah. yeah I, I don't expect anyone <laughs> to agree with that. Um, I've, I've been finding though, the, a lot of the genres have been like repeating itself. Like now we're in a synth pop kind of like resurgence a little bit and like dream pop See, and like, yeah, it's very eighties. And it's like, it's funny. I think, I think that actually, um, I, I, I think that actually kind of died after 2015. And I think what you're, what you're hearing now are like copies of what was actually good like five years ago. Um, like I, I think a, a yeah, lot sometimes. of what happened was with like, with like indie music and um, like alternative music um, for the mid 2000s to 2015 ish. Like, um, I mean, it's just a general time period that I think of, but uh, you had songwriting that was almost as good as my favorite time in music in the eighties um, mixed with like incredible sounds again. And then I think now in the past five years, you've had a lot of radio friendly groups that I don't necessarily like, um, kind of copying that and making it more popular and kind of like banking off of the more underground bands that were around, you know, whatever, five, 10 years ago, they're still around. It's just, I mean, there, a lot of those bands kind of seem to, uh, you know, peak around their third or fourth album. A lot of the bands I'm thinking of in, you know, whatever, mid, mid 2000s or whatever. Well, I'm thinking of like bands like, um, Norway's chain wallet is like a good example. I don't know if, I don't know if you ever heard of them, but, um, who is it? It's a band called chain, chain wallet. They just released their second album like two weeks ago, but they're very like, no, I've never heard them. It check. It's like a dream pop synth pop, like that kind of, I'm thinking more of like the smaller bands that are really good. Like I don't really necessarily think like the, the synth popular bands are um, good or anything like that. But I've, I've been finding like in my doing reviews for my website, I've been finding certain bands that just stick out that have that eighties style or like shoe yeah. gaze, shoe gaze. And, um, but I, I, it's, it's funny seeing the bands that, you know, broke up and then they're coming back now because that, that, sound is kind of still popular even though you, you think it's dead but <laughs> well it's not, it's not that it's dead it never i mean uh, the, the thing is the, these things never die it's just that i think they they grow and, and i think in um i think after i mean i always kind of think of like um the late 90s as like when 
everything that was completely, I mean, not com- I don't even know if I would say completely original, but I mean, you had bands like, like uh, <laughs> and I'm not saying anything good or bad about these bands, but all I'll say is I think like Limp Bizkit and like Korn and oh, um, yeah. <laughs> a lot of those guys, that's the last time you heard anything that wasn't like a complete rehash. Yeah, um, it was new metal. It's not like metal. It was new metal. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but that was the last time, at least for me, where I was like, "What is this?" And and you know what's weird is I people people diss all over like um, you know Limp Bizkit and Corn and I uh, you know I just keep <laughs> that whole family values kind of um, weird weird like white male like angry um, genre of music that happened. I don't even know, I don't even yeah. know what happened to that. It was crazy. It just and it was right in my prime of like middle school like high school was when all of that was popular so like i definitely i definitely went out and like bought a papa roach album at some point in my life when i was like a younger kid um and uh i was still, for, I was still listening to that one song that they, they had last resort i still like that one but <laughs> well, the, the songs the songs didn't really stick like uh you know like they did in like the 80s and stuff but yeah you you did for whatever reason have that last like that last like gasp of like MTV, like like the fact that like Corn and Britney Spears were on TRL at the same time, like you'll you will probably never see anything like that again. Yeah, that's a bit, a bit um, of a bit mismatch. <laughs> truly bizarre. Like if you look at if you look at what's on the radio right, like I, I mean you know so many different forms of radio now. A lot of people don't listen to uh, radio like they used to. But if you listen to what's on like you know the top forty stations. Um, it's mainly all the same exact kind of genre. Um, And if it's not, it's like, here's pop country. Here's, here's like hip hop and rap. And then here's just straight, like it's like Katy Perry and stuff like that, which is now, you know, kind of harkening back to uh, being influenced through a lot of like 80s stuff now. But uh, it's mainly just that, like that's as far, that's the spectrum and that's it. But to think that, something got really weird in like the late nineties, early two thousands where like you could have green day on the radio, blink One Eighty Two on the radio, Britney Spears on the radio, and then have like Limp Biscuit. (laughs) Um, so weird. Just that that, that's honestly, I think weirder than the eighties and people don't think of it that way. But like when you think of a band like, uh, like Limp Biscuit, like how, how did they get so, (laughs) they were massive. Like people don't, People forget how insanely huge those bands were already. Like they've they've forgotten, and bands that just came and sounded like them would just get huge because that's what everybody wanted for whatever reason at that time period. And uh, And I know I'm I'm going on and on, but I always think about that stuff constantly. It's funny though. I mean, like how those bands were so popular, and then all of a sudden it's just like, you know, it stopped, and then and then they just weren't around anymore you didn't listen listen to it i don't know whether it's because mtv scaled back videos or i just stopped listening to radio i think i think it's it's a lot of that but i also think what happens is a lot of these bands um you know they start kind of underground and then people hear about them and they're like oh you got to hear this kind of newish sounding thing and then it becomes like this hot new thing and they get really popular and then their next album comes out and if their next album there's like a weird fine line. If it's too different, they lose people. And if it's too much the same, they lose people. So they can keep making music for 10 years. And a lot of times they'll keep the same fan base, but the majority of people, it's where you can't really keep people happy. Like, uh, like if Limp Bizkit for, I'll just keep using them as an example, (laughs) but like, okay. So they had, they had their one really popular album that came out significant other. Um, and then they had, um, chocolate starfish in the hot dog flavored water. And it was basically just another more extreme version of the album before it. So they had a few hits off of it and then just died because it was, that's, I mean, at least on the radio, it just died because it wasn't anything new anymore. Um, the last, honestly, the last band in that kind of similar genre to music to have, consistent success was probably like Lincoln Park, I would say. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh and like you know, I'm not I'm not trying to say anything bad or 
good about those bands. I'm not like, I'm not sitting here listening to Limp Bizkit like albums or anything these days. But uh, but it's always interesting for me to think about just the the fact that um, like Corn had multiple radio hits with songs that I, they I don't even know if they would get signed today, honestly. Yeah. And they had they had, they had these huge hits and. I, that would just never happen now. Like, I, I, it's always really interesting. I, that's weirder to me than, like, Adam Ant having a hit. Like, it's it's so bizarre. It's such, like, a an unfriendly-sounding style of music, too. And yet, at that time, it's just like, man, dude, they, I mean, they were the headliners at Woodstock. I mean, it's insane. Yeah, it, it, in a way, it's kind of similar to how Ska was. It was, like, a, two or three years of it, and then people moved on to emo and post hardcore or something like that so totally it's, totally yeah so it's I'm, i was always in the ska and punk uh like since the 90s so that's what i was listening to mostly and now and now it's like i'm going back to the 90s rock alternative the stuff i like like i, I hated oasis back then but now i like love them and, and yeah and other oasis bands like is that. amazing but it's I, it's like once you kind of go back and look i don't, I don't see i don't think i'm going to come back to the 2000s and the 2010s or whatever and come back and like well these this music was was really good like pop music and i i just the pop music today is it doesn't feel the same as it was in, in the 80s uh, I, I think it's i think it's because um just good songs just don't like it like you can't mess with a good song like a good song is a good song um and if somebody i really dislike nowadays even comes out with a good song i'll i'll just admit it i'll be like this is this is just a good song from like a bad <laughs> artist like it's a possible thing yeah um and i and i think in that time period it would turn like in the the mid 70s the 80s kind of new wave scene you really had a punk attitude with mixed with like almost like velvet underground um like david bowie kind of art style but then you still have these people like like tears for fears wrote such insane like they're my favorite band of all time it's still okay. tears for fears always my favorite band um and their song like a song like everybody wants to rule the world like you couldn't even try to write a song that good at least in my eyes like you can't that's just one of those gifts that like somehow they came up with that probably didn't think it was a big deal and now that song is so big that like my my kids kids will probably still be hearing everybody <laughs> wants to rule the world in supermarkets in like 50 years like i um, still remember it from dennis miller alive he used to have that as his one of his songs uh back before he was a right-wing nut uh and then <laughs> and then uh in the movie real genius too at the end of that movie too i just was memorable songs well, these, these songs just stand the test of time i mean yeah. you have in, in the 80s, you really have um people that know how to write good songs through being influenced by you know bands like the beatles and stones or zombies or whatever um mixed with that image and those those two things you can't mess with like uh, i mean you you can't mess with an interesting image that like no one's really copied adam ant's image successfully so it's still it's still like his thing. Like it's not, nobody's ever been able to like take that away from him. Yeah. Um, because it was so weirdly original. Um, but mixed with the, the songs are just still good. Like they don't, even some of the, even some of the new wave bands that people like to laugh at, like, like Flock of Seagulls, like they, they still have some, they have some good songs. Like the yeah. songs just don't, they don't get old for whatever reason. And, um, I don't know, a lot of songs, a lot of even like popular songs, like, I don't know, like I'll, I'll hear a song on the radio um, by like Coldplay and I'll be like, oh, this is good. Oh, this is a good song. And I'll listen to it and then it's old after like a few days. Like it's just, this, yeah. I don't know why, but something just doesn't stick like uh, like it used to, um, at least for more popular bands. Like, you know, I can get into other bands I'm listening to that I think have, you know, a lot of sticking power that I don't get sick of, but at least what I'm hearing on the radio. And I mean, we do long drives all the time to, yeah. um, to uh, conventions and stuff all over the country. So, so oh, I keep up with the radio quite a bit and I, oh, and I okay. work at home all day. So I listen to podcasts all day long. If I'm, if I don't feel like listening to anything, I'll just 
put on the radio and just see what's on. I can't remember. Times, I can't remember the last time I put on the radio. <laughs> Maybe yeah, it's, 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 it's interesting, man. If you turn on top 40 stations now, it's, you you really learn a lot, especially if you go in with an open mind of like, I'm not going to hate this. I need to I, – I try – when I was younger, I would I would go out of my way to, to just hate every little thing that I thought was like uncool. Um, and now I kind of approach things in the opposite way. And, and I think, I think I'm, being an artist – has helped that a lot because I do a lot of work for bands and there are certain bands that I would be like, I hate oh, this band's horrible or whatever. And then they reach out to me and they're like, Oh, we'd love for you to um, do this poster for us. And suddenly I'm like, Oh yeah, I'll do that poster for you. <laughs> when like, you know, whatever, a few days before that, before I knew they would contact me, I was like, they're the worst band. So it's, it's made me really kind of approach things in a more mature kind of light of like, you gotta. You can find something good in this if you if you really listen. Um, and I, I don't know. the The only the only person I can't find anything good in is Drake. He's the only <laughs> guy. <laughs> he was on Degrassi Junior High or High or whatever. <laughs> he, he was. Yeah, he was, man. But I don't know what it is. I I'm always trying. And if I hate something like uh, musically. I want to keep listening to it. I'm like confused by it. I'm like, why can't I like, why can't I like this? Like, why do other people enjoy this? And I don't know what it is about him, but I just can't. Yeah. Like, no matter what, I just can't find anything. Can't find a, a single thing where I'm like, I like this part of him, like at all. <laughs> um, I wanted to, since you mentioned conventions, I was actually going to bring that up. Um, the first time, the first time I uh, I met you, it was last year at the New York Comic Con. I think it was on the Thursday, and I bought a snow mo- moser, <laughs> snow miser, uh, pun ornament, uh, which I hung up on my Christmas tree. Um, cool. Yeah. So yeah, we we talked a little bit. Um, I I think you were like, I was, I, I think I was confused because I think because you. A lot of your artwork went viral, but I thought a lot of my friends knew you. So I was like asking him, like, I feel like we have a lot of similar friends. Um, and but then you were like looking at me with two heads. But then I ended up buying something um, and then taking a picture of me. And stuff. <laughs> um, but I'm wondering, like, so you, you do a lot of conventions and stuff like that. So is that where you get like a lot of your exposure, or you just get you get some good money yeah, doing my, that? You know, my my main exposure is just through people online and and i i don't know i i've kind of um found a way i mean honestly like my my favorite thing to do is just like original artwork um but people for obvious reasons just you know they really like what they already know so because of that i kind of walk a fine line of like all right if you want to make some sort of living at this you got to kind of incorporate pop culture things other yeah. people like in pop culture, but also kind of try to do it in your own style. And then there's also a lot of times where I'm like, I want to create completely different looking art, but then I kind of take a step back and I'm like, dude, if you keep kind of expanding off of the same thing, it's, it's kind of annoying for me and kind of a shame, but it's also how people immediately recognize like, like with my saints and stuff, I, I make them look a certain way every single time so that eventually I can have enough to where people can open up like a book or something and be like, Oh, I know, I know that artist. I know exactly who that is. Um, I, I recognize your stuff already because I see people like sharing it and stuff all the time without tagging you, of course, but I'm like, Oh, that's yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah. Constantly, man. I, you know, it's crazy. And it, it's, it's funny because it, like with the Valentines that I do, um, you know, that, that's just like an old idea. You know, I used to collect those um, Valentines in like the 90s and stuff when I would get yeah, them in elementary that. school. And, and, you know, as, as a little kid, like those, that's like, I almost consider those like the first pieces of art I collected without realizing I was collecting art. But I just loved, I knew I loved all the things on them. Like, oh man, there's Ghostbusters and, and Charlie Brown and whatever, you know, whatever the hell it was. Like, yeah, I, I love those. Things. I just, yeah. Yeah, I thought I thought they were great. I wanted to like paste them all on my wall and everything. I thought I thought they were like the the coolest little like almost like tiny prints basically at that time in my life. Um but you know, I I've made those kinds of things and I make them for for fun and then people just they just go with them and I guess everybody is like, "Oh, you know, this guy took a lot of time to make something completely ridiculous." And and it goes viral every single time. 
And then people start tagging me nonstop yeah. um, in ones that they printed out. <laughs> and I'm just like, thanks. Like, I, you know, I don't want to be a dick about it. Yeah, um, I was going to ask you about all that stuff. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, we can I, get into it later, but I get yeah. I get really annoyed by it. Yeah, but I don't get personally angry at it, um, especially to those people, because it's just kind of the world we, we live in now. Like people don't really realize what they're doing. And, and I've noticed if I put a, um, like a, a huge watermark, like over my art, yep. it won't, it won't go anywhere. Like nobody wants to share it for whatever reason. So I kind of got to keep it just like the art with like maybe just my signature or whatever in the corner. And sometimes I'll get, sometimes I'll be, you know, not so nice. If like somebody deletes like my, uh, the watermark. My signature, yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever, off of like the corner of it. Then, you know, then maybe I'm not like too friendly about it. But for the most part, if people just don't, they don't know, you know, they see something they like online, I, I wish they knew and to, you know, to credit me. But I don't know, man, people, people are busy. They're sharing a million like memes and things a day. And then they see like a silly Valentine and they, you know, they're not thinking like, oh, this is art. They're just like, this is a... This is a silly Valentine. I'll share well, it real quick, and that's it. You know, they well, people, don't think twice about it. Well, people think that it's online that you can just take it for free. So yeah, I do concert photography. Yeah, I do. Exactly. I do shirts, and people take that and they crop out the watermark. I mean, a lot of times people will tag me. Other times people won't, and people. And then I ran into, a, you know, I started doing T-shirts maybe a couple of years ago on T Public, and it was just nonstop people taking my artwork and to the point where it's it's like almost a full-time job trying to do takedowns of like these these sites from like india indonesia and russia oh, well those <laughs> those sites are a different story those i don't yeah. i don't fuck with those sites those, those those sites are dickheads and i'll they are yes. i'll take that to the grave with me like i i hope those sites like rot like they're um they're the, they'll be the death of me dude like me and most of the artists I know have so much stolen on those sites yeah, all the too. time. And you, it's, it's crazy. I don't know. I don't know what, what's going to happen, but, um, these, these sites steal so much art and then you try to get a hold of them and they block you. Yep. And then if you call, it's like you call T public and people or I'm just using well, them as an example, but you call one of them and they're just like, Oh, we don't know who put this up. Like there's they literally like they lead to nowhere. It's, it's a run around and that's why it's like a full time job. And then, yeah. Um, I've, I've run into where I've, I've had, so I did like a Deadpool fuck cancer t-shirt, which you probably seen because it, that one went viral. Um, yeah. And, uh, but p someone put, um, that image on Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> so, <laughs> So then I'm like, why am I getting all these sales now? So it was like a blessing and a curse. That's my most popular shirt. But then everyone's stealing it because everyone's seeing Ryan, Ryan, Ryan Reynolds wear this. Yeah, dude. And and you know, oh. the, the, thing that really, um, the thing that really messes with me the most is those, those are the websites that are going to ruin it for, for everyone yeah. eventually. And that's the thing that, that worries me is I think for whatever reason, we're in a place right now where like, I, you know, I, I draw, um, and I, you know, I paint a lot of these, uh, a lot of these artists I love and a lot of them are really nice about it and really, really thankful about it. And, um, I mean, some of them repost it and some of them reach out and thank me and say, can I get some? And it means the world to me, yeah. but all it takes is one of those like dickhead websites to, sell a million shirts of like, I, I'm just using Duran Duran as like an example. Yeah. Um, cause Duran Duran is always super friendly about my stuff and they'll repost it. And like, they, they help me out a lot. But like, you know, maybe they'll find out that there's been like hundreds of t-shirts of like a design I made with them on it. And then because of that shitty website, then I got to take it down what I have of Duran Duran. Like, and and that'll happen, especially, you know, you're talking about like using things like Deadpool and stuff yes. like that. Um, Which I've had that taken you down. You know, like right, <laughs> right now, it's maybe not like a huge problem, but like, you know, you have, if you have like 10 t-shirt websites taking it down, it's at some point, or not taking it down, but whatever, trying to sell it. Yeah. At some point, it's going to come back to you and then like there's a problem. And, and that's, I'm, you know, I worry that that's going to kind of be... I don't know if it's the, the end necessarily, but I do think, um, 
I, I think it'll definitely take a lot of uh, a lot of people out. Yeah, that way. I, mean, I, I um, it definitely kind of it kind of I kind of stopped or slowed down a little bit because it was just frustrating trying to do because all the stuff that I would do original wouldn't sell, so I would do stuff that's IPs and, and then I would get you know that stuff taken down if it's like some like hbo and or like warner brothers like coming after you or just have like a general takedown for t public that if you tag it the wrong way it gets taken down um yeah and then there's musician or like um not musician but uh like music um licensing kind of companies that if you tag something like i had something like the beatles uh someone like a character for the New York Red Bulls, they were walking across Abbey Road and I tagged at Abbey Road and it was taken down because it's similar to the Beatles or something. So it's like, yeah, it's, interesting. It's, it's this fine line thing that's like, it kind of pisses me off and it's, but it's like, it's nice side money, but then it's like, is, is everything going to come bite me in the ass in the end? Because you have all this intellectual properties kind of stuff as your artwork. You know, it's, it's, um, it's interesting. And I know, you know, I've, just doing these conventions and being friends with people that do it constantly. I, a lot of my stuff is, uh, is licensed. Oh, really? And, um, yeah. And, and I do, I do license quite a few of my things, but then there's other things that like, you just, you just like can't get licensed. Yeah. Like, and it's not even, it doesn't even get to like the subject you're doing. You just like, like they don't see the potential in like the thing you're making. And, you're like, no, like, I know this will sell. And they're just like, yeah, like, we're not interested. So then you're like, well, what do I do with this design? Like, what do I do with this thing I made? So you yeah. just sell it. And, then, you know, nine times out of ten, you're fine. But, like, it's a lot of these, um, I don't know. There, there's, uh, especially, there's, there's so many people I know that do, like, the same thing. Like, there's, like, so many people I know have, like, uh, Jason Voorhees art, for instance. Yeah. Um which is fine. I, I love it. And, you know, at some point I would love to do like a, a piece from like Friday the 13th or something just to add to that um, piece of pop culture. But like you have hundreds and hundreds of artists just doing Jason Voorhees. Eventually something's going to happen. <laughs> it's just, Deadpool's like, like was the number one. I don't know if it still is, but it's definitely that that and like Rick and Morty are like the most popular things that I always see at conventions and on, online. Oh yeah, man. Well, people jump on these things, and and right now, like um, I'm I'm working on a few uh, licensed things that I'm I'm pretty excited about that people haven't really like even been able to get the license to before, and I'm just oh, like, nice. wow, that's that's really cool, and like that's that's really exciting, but then it. It leads to, th I don't know, it's, it's weird because there's, there's certain things where, like, you can just get it licensed, and then there's other things like, um, like uh, I, I don't even want to mention anything, but there's, there's other certain things where, like, if you try to get it licensed, they're just, they're just not, not interested. And it's, and it's not even, like, they're not, like, mean about it. It's just yeah. not something, like, they're, they're, they don't even want to talk to you, you know? It's just... <laughs> It just is what it is. I tried getting a hold of Ryan Reynolds and I'm like, because people were, were tagging him in my like saying, Oh, I'm so happy that you did this fuck cancer thing. And, and, and then th this year he goes and does like the whole like uh fudge cancer kind of campaign. And I'm like, well, that's something I wanted to do like th during the last movie and, and donate money to ch cancer charities. <laughs> and yeah. I was like, oh, uh, I'm like, I wish he like got a hold of me because I would have lo loved to like, and I, I did donate a lot of money to cancer charities. So I wasn't like, like, cause I got like, oh, you're making money off of like cancer. But I'm like, no, it was the, my dad passed away from cancer. So it's like well, one of the reasons why I did it. And it's, yeah, um, I mean, yeah, if you, if you have proof for that stuff and everything, that's, I mean, you know, it's great. Why yeah. not? I mean, yeah. there's nothing, there's nothing, uh, I, I don't know. My my view on the whole thing, because I'm around it at all times at, at these conventions and stuff is if if you're not making something that, um, like if, if you're making something that is taking away from the people you're, you're drawing, like yeah. if you... Like if you drew, um, you know, I'll just use Deadpool. Like if you, if you drew Deadpool in a certain way that made the movie look bad and yeah. disrespected like the property of that movie and made people like not want to see the movie anymore, then like, yeah, yeah like you, you, you're probably like, you probably shouldn't have that. Um, 
But if you're like a fan and you're like, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to make this like Stranger Things um, t-shirt, like, because I'm a huge fan of Stranger Things. Yeah. Um, if it's your own art and like you didn't just like take like an image offline, I don't, I, I fail to see how that like takes away yeah, it's like, from it's the fan show. It, it adds yeah. to it. Like yeah. it, to me, it, it just adds to the culture of like more and more people wanting to watch the show and, and it being like a popular thing. Um, and, and I try to do that with the, with the bands and stuff that I, um, that I paint and everything also, I, I try to make sure like, it's always kind of tasteful. I mean, some of, you know, some of the paintings I've done maybe aren't so tasteful just because like, I wasn't a good enough painter yet. <laughs> um, cause, you know, you just get better every year. And I look back at some of the ones I did when I first started and I'm like, Ooh, man, that's pretty bad. But, uh, but I think, you know, if if you mean well and you're you're painting these people in a positive light, like, you know, I'm not, I'm not painting like, you know, if I come out with a painting and it's like Duran Duran, like pissing on like Robert Smith's face, then, like, um, <laughs> then you know, they're, then it's kind of like a disrespectful thing for yeah. whatever reason. But like, I don't do that. Like, these are people that I love. I want to build them up. Um, some of them, you know, uh, some of them really love it and you know, help me out. And I, I mean, it's just, I, I feel really uh, lucky about all of that. Cause, cause I love all of these bands. And, and a lot of times people will be like, um, do you meet a lot of the bands and stuff? And, and honestly, like I, I don't really want to, like, I, um, I'm not interested in that. Like, I, I mean, if I'm working with some of the bands, then that's cool. But like, in terms of like, going to like meet like people will try to bring me to like meet and greets and stuff sometimes they'll be like you are i got the extra thing for like a meet and greet for like this band and i'm like i don't i yeah. i just kind of want them to be like this i like them as like this cartoon like person that got me through like high school instead of uh instead of like meeting them and then maybe they're, I don't know, maybe they're like not super friendly to me, um, which has happened before. You know, I've met certain people and they're just not, yep. Happened to me they're too. not, they're not the nicest. And, and then, and then it kind of messes up like the, the music for me. And, I, and then I listen to it and it leaves like a bad taste in my mouth. And Yeah. There's and, certain uh, bands that I'm like, after I experienced something with them and I'm like, well, this guy's a dick. I'm not going to listen to his music anymore. Yeah. I don't know. I also, I look into things too much. So like, you know, maybe like, you know, I'm, like I'm afraid like I would meet like Robert Smith and he would like look at me the wrong way. And then the rest of my life I'd be like, that guy hated me. Like for, for, <laughs> for whatever reason I'd be like that. Like Robert Smith, like gave me like a bad look or something. <laughs> I, I don't know, but I just, I don't, I, I just want to know him as like the guy I see on stage and, and uh, you know, I'm not a music journalist. Um, I'm not trying to like, you know, interview these guys or anything. I just, um, if if I work with any of the bands, then like, you know, it's usually through management. I'm not like, you know, I'm not like sitting here at like a round table with like Duran Duran or anything. Yeah. Um, and, and I kind of enjoy that because I don't know what I would honestly add to any conversation if like I met, like, I mean, you know, like, like Ad, I'm sure Adam Ant meets fans every day and they all say the same thing to him for literally the past like three decades, just people, oh, I love you. I love your music. I love that. I don't, I just don't want to, um, I don't want to be that. Like, I just, I, I prefer to just kind of like, I love them and they're there. I hold them on like a pedestal and I don't want to, uh, I don't want to like get to know them any more than that. Well, it's like the growing pains episode where what's his face. Was it Ben or something like goes and meets the rock star was Brad Pitt. And then the guy was like an asshole to him. And then they kind of just ruins yeah. her. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, uh, funny story where speak, speaking of jello, we we saw jello be offering like, Michael Franti and some other people speak at the wetlands in New York city, uh, back in the nineties, they're doing like a spoken word thing. And my older brother and I were like trying to go talk to him. And, uh, afterwards he's like, I really have to piss. And then he just like, ran into the bathroom. I mean, I'm, it's, I, I'm like, I still listen to his music, but it was kind of like a disappointing moment. I'm just, it was just a bad time, you know? So it's like, that, yeah. that, that can happen. <laughs> you know, it's, I, um, I was in bands for years and so you mentioned ska earlier and uh, I was in a ska band for years. Really? Um, what was the name of the band? And uh, we, we were called Red Plaid Menace. 
Okay, I don't think I've heard you guys. <laughs> and uh, we we played with with tons and tons of different bands. But then um, I also was in a uh, I was the lead singer of a Celtic punk band for years. Wow, you and, like uh, all the genres I like, like ska and the Celtic. Yeah, yeah, we we would tour, and we I mean I I um got to meet tons and tons of bands that I looked up to then, and some of them were dicks, and a lot of them were unbelievably friendly and made me like the bands even more. Um, yeah. Like just, uh, I don't know, like, like meeting like the um, guys in like bouncing souls. And, uh, some of these, some of these people were, were so nice. Like, like, uh, God, dude, I can't even remember his name, but the lead singer of bouncing souls. Oh, Greg, was such yeah. Like a, yeah. He was such like a, like a new wave freak also. So I talked to him for like hours about like, psychedelic furs and all these uh all these awesome like new wave bands and stuff and uh i mean that that helps and and that was really nice but i I mean i'm not going out of my way to to meet these guys and then not it's 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 the opposite of anything against them like it's nothing against them at all i just don't um i don't know i i just i guess it's a fear of just like like you know I, I mean, I've met like Alice Cooper, who is super friendly. Like I have a picture with him. Nice. Um, but also I think, you know, I'm at these conventions all the time. I see people in line meeting these celebrities constantly. And it's cool to get certain signatures on my wall and like meet them. But to pay for but, it? Oh, I don't. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't, I don't even mind. It depends. Like on my, I'll, now, like I have a, I have an autograph wall, like in my studio and to me, it's not even like a hugely special thing, but it is really cool to just have like, like I've like John Carpenter, like Wes Craven. Um, I'm like looking at it right now. Like uh, I have uh, like Robert Englund and like, I try to have like these true, like, like classic people up there. Um, and like, that's really cool. But like, I don't want to get to know these people. Like, I just, I just want to sign my thing and I'm out of here. Like, because that's, <laughs> that's all I, because yeah. And it's nothing against them at all again, but like, that's all I am to them. I'm just a guy who paid to get a signature. So like, I, I don't really have, like, I still view them in the same way because I spent no time with them. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and I prefer it that way. Like I prefer to look at these people and kind of keep like the wonder I had when I was a little kid instead of like, kind of be like a jaded grown up where I'm like, this guy's an asshole and stuff. You yeah. Know? Um, Switching gears, I'm like, so did you, so have you been putting on any gallery shows or or like have some of your artwork submitted to some other gallery shows that are kind of nostalgic based? Well, I do, I do a lot of stuff for uh, Gallery 1988. Okay, yeah. Which is like a a dream come true because they're one of my favorite galleries and, um, I, you know, I I always want to bring, I mean, I do stuff at other galleries too, but then there's, there's other galleries that I would put on par with Gallery 198 that I'd love to be in. But like, for instance, like right now, I, I'm working on a bunch of, um, a bunch of gallery shows coming up and then I'm working on, uh, a bunch of stuff that like I'm actually not allowed to reveal yet. Like yeah. things for like uh, certain like books coming out, and, um, all kinds of like, uh, stuff that like, it, it kind of sucks because I like, I'm working all month on something right now that like no one's going to see for like a year. Oof. So by the time, like it, by the time it comes out, like I won't, I won't even care anymore. Like, I'll just be like, Oh, here's this thing I did like a year ago. Um, yeah. and those things make you no money like at all. Like even when I do stuff through like a lot of, uh, bands and stuff, like, you know, I did stuff for like Willie Nelson, nice. um, like, uh, I think last year, two years ago or something. And like, they, they pretty much pay like, like a few hundred bucks. Like it's not, um, you just kind of do it for like your portfolio. Like it's not going to help you like actually pay rent, but you do it to just say like, you you know, if I, if I reach out to another gallery soon, it's nice to be like, Hey, I did work for these people and I've been in these galleries and it's just kind of a building thing up. And then I pay my rent through, you know, doing like Christmas ornaments and, and those, those kinds of things. And then it kind of helps me, spend the rest of the year just like doing art for other people but like they just don't they don't pay that much oh um, i know very well about that <laughs> yeah and it's just it just is what it is you know it's one of those yeah. i have other artists that are like 
well, then don't like do it if it doesn't pay much. And it's like, why? So like another artist can just do it. Cause like, that's, that's the problem is like other, if I'm not going to do it, like if I'm not going to do this piece for Willie Nelson, some other artist will. And so we'll I'm like, cheaper. I may as well just do it. And for cheaper. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it, it sucks, but it's the way it is, especially, especially now you have so many people, um, as with things like Instagram and stuff like, like suddenly like it's a reachable goal of like, I can, I can be an artist for a living and people, um, whether they can make it or not, uh, I mean, God, there's just thousands and thousands of like unbelievable artists. Like I find new unbelievable artists like every single day through yeah. like social media. And I mean, there's, there's no trouble finding these people. So whenever I get like a job like that, I'm just like, yes, yes, I'll do it. I'll, <laughs> you know, that's great. Um, like I said, I'm working on certain things right now that like, I can't reveal yet. And like, they're not even like paying me, but there's such, there's, there's such things that excite me that I'm like, I'll, I'll do it. And then I'm allowed to sell prints of it. So technically like I'm getting paid After if the people fact. buy the prints and stuff, yeah. but like, they're not paying me. Um, and honestly, like, I don't know, like that's, if it excites me and I'm excited to do it, like that's, that's all right. Like, I, I don't know. It's not like they're being cheap and saying you can, you have to do this for us. And then like, that's it. Like they're saying you can do this. It's licensed. It's like an official thing and you're allowed to like sell it, but like, we're not going to pay you to do it. So I guess in a way, like they are paying me in like a, in a weird way where I guess at conventions and stuff, I can sell things and everything. But, uh, Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, so you wouldn't be able to sell your stuff if it wasn't licensed, right? At at like conventions, like you probably need, like, to have all that stuff be licensed stuff in order to sell on the floor, right? What What do you mean? Like, say all your artwork that you've done, like, do you need to have everything licensed um, through the proper channels to, in order to sell on the floor, or can you like, like, oh, here's you don't. I mean, you you don't. I mean, there's nobody. They they like you too, um, okay. but I mean it's, it all depends on the convention and stuff too. I mean if you walk around at um, a lot of these places, like you know I do like a lot of the Walker Stalker conventions, yeah. and it's it's all Walking Dead conventions, which um, like those those places you have you have people just selling like they'll take like a Norman Reedus picture and just have it on shirt. <laughs> I've and seen those I'm like, too. dude, you didn't even do anything. Like, yeah. You just like printed this out and like put it on a shirt. Now you're just making tons of money off of it. And I haven't seen anyone in that world get in any trouble um, for doing any of that. And then I'm, you know, I'm over here. I'm actually like drawing things and like putting the, you know, yep. putting Daryl from Walking Dead. I mean, this is now. I mean, I haven't done a Walking Dead piece in a long time now, but. uh you know, when it, when it was like at its most popular with the show a few years ago, I mean, you could still go to those Walking Dead conventions right now, and there's like 50 booths of people selling only unlicensed Walking Dead stuff. Um, and I think right now, at least, like the Walking Dead realizes that that's part of like their fandom. Like yeah. it's like keeping keeping them alive. And I know, you know, maybe the show isn't in like the best. Uh, place ratings wise right now compared at least compared to what they used to do but in its prime like i i think those conventions are like what what made that show like soar to the top of like the biggest ratings of like any tv show um so a lot of the times like i i you go on the floor of these conventions and like i said before like if if you're not disrespecting these people you probably don't have a problem yeah but I do, I, I try to, uh, I try to license a lot of my stuff and everything depending on what it is. Just so like, I, I don't know. I, I just feels good. Like I it feels yeah. better. Yeah. It's, it, you're doing it the right way. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> unlike me but, where I could come it, up with an idea and I'm like, Oh, I'm doing this. And oh, if it gets taken down, it gets taken down kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, I don't know. It's, that that whole that that whole pop culture sector of like it's it's such a huge thing right now. I mean, it's not even as big. I feel like as it was. I feel like it peaked like two or three years ago, and it's still huge. But like you know, like New York Comic Con and these places, 
Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Like, no, it's just adding to it. What, what's seriously, what is the other option? Like you, you get every single artist on the floor and then there's no working artists. And then the con dies. Like, is that, is that the next step? Like, I don't, so I don't look down on any of the people that are selling like unlicensed, like, like I, I'm, yeah. if they have unlicensed, like Halloween merch, like whatever, dude, like keep, keep Halloween alive. Like keep a, Keep that movie going. Like, I don't care. Like, that's... It's definitely a fine great. line. Yeah, it's definitely, like, a fine line of, like... Well, sometimes it's kind of shady, and sometimes it's... it's oh, This is okay. You know, like, the Norman Reed is just putting that on a yeah. T-shirt. Oh, dude, a, that, that's the thing, though. See, like, I mean... Now, look, I'm not the law. I'm not... Um, And honestly, I've, I... You know, after doing this for a long time, there there literally, like, are no laws for, for any of it. Which it's is like kind the Wild of like West the, right now, yeah. What's that? It's like the wild, wild west right now, as far as it is, and, and it's really weird. Like, like there are there are no laws, and people think there are laws, but it's it's really just like a bunch of people, like for the past like ten years, just telling other people wrong information, and then that wrong information just going literally all over the place. So everybody's just spitting out wrong information. Yeah. I've had people tell me all kinds of wrong information before. And while they're talking, I'm just like in my head, I'm like, that's wrong. Like, I mean, that's actual wrong information that <laughs> you heard somewhere. Um, because there, there's no, here's, here's the thing. Like there's, there's not a lot of like, okay, if you're doing, um, if you're, if you're doing like a Deadpool piece, um, or, you know, I'm not going to use that because you, you did that. <laughs> um, but, uh, like if you're doing, um, I try to do a lot of eighties, eighties obscure, like if you're, U, UHF. Or like... I mean, look, if, if you're doing a Will Smith piece and you're just like, yo, I'm going to paint Will Smith. Yeah. And, um, Will Smith is able to come after you, but at the same time, you pretty much have just as much leverage as him because like, there's no, like, there's no like actual set law. So like, it would have to actually go somewhere that would be stupidly serious for like, I made a Will Smith lapel pin. And like, now like I'm in court with Will Smith. Like, I mean, that wouldn't like, that's just stupid. So like, you know, at, at most, like, they'll just be like, stop that. And then you're like, Oh, I'm so, you know, yeah. I'm sorry. Cause you are sorry. Cause you're like, I didn't, you know, I meant no disrespect. And then like, that's that. Um, but like, and, and, you know, you could even fight that, but like, nobody wants to, like, there's no, I'm not going to yeah. go and like fight like Marvel in court. Like, come on, dude. Like, it's just, and, and you might win and they might win. And then in the end, like, you know, you still spent all these money on these you things. Have so you know, so you much just, money just to even get in, into the trial. Like it's, it's insane. So it's like, it's kind of just put your shoulders on yeah, whatever. Okay. That sucks. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I mean, you know, look, like I said, Thousands and thousands of artists all doing this and adding to the culture yeah. of, I mean, whatever, like Rick and Morty, for instance, like that Rick and Morty shit is everywhere at conventions. Oh, yeah. And, you know, you know, if it's licensed because you're like, yo, here's like a toy. And then, you know, here's this guy's art. And you can tell, like, this is just like this guy just made this. But like. I don't know who cares. Like I'm not like, like yeah. more people love Rick and Morty now because of, of that whole entire like scene and, you know, comic cons and stuff doing those kinds of things. And, you know, eventually maybe it won't be okay. And then when it's not okay, like those will die. And like, there, there just won't be fun anymore. Like I don't, like, I don't know. I don't know what else to like say about it. Honestly. Yeah. yeah. Um, I wanted to talk to you about your, like, how do you, for your artwork, like, what's your process like? Do you, like, come, have just a bunch of ideas in a notebook and then you just kind of pick what you want? And, like, do you use, like, a tablet uh, or iPad or, like... like? So, I I walk, like, a uh, a fine line of being, like, I, I'll do, um, I'll paint with, like, gouache. Okay. And, uh, and I really started with like acrylic and things like that. But like in, in art school, they don't, they don't really like help you with these things. You just kind of need to like learn on your own. So like, I've really learned so much through social media and things like that. But, uh, um, I really, I, I don't know. I, re I really like to, to kind of sketch things out, 
paint them. Um, and then a lot of the times after that, I'll kind of like turn it into digital, okay. um, which I didn't used to like to do. But then I started to realize like nobody cares because it's, it's mainly like, the final product, I guess. Like in- Instagram, like you know, and a lot of people wouldn't like me saying this, but like Instagram, like is like the new gallery, like in a lot of ways. Like you, you oh, put definitely. it up there, like that's your art show right now. Like yeah. there's more people seeing this painting that I just did, um, and just didn't even have to leave my room from like re- just reposting it than that would ever see or come out to like a gallery show. So. I mean, it's it's really it's amazing. I mean, I'm not uh, I'm not upset about it in any way. Like, I think it's a I think it's a beautiful thing, and I hope it I hope it stays that way. And I hope I hope um, artists don't get too like bitter about it. Because I, I hear artists constantly like dissing on Instagram, and I'm like, yo, be careful. Like, I don't know what the other option is for you. Like, uh, you literally like made a name for yourself through Instagram, and now you're like, fuck Instagram, and don't just don't bite the hand that feeds you yeah. really. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I mean, I, I don't like the fact that it's not chronological anymore. And, yeah, and I, that pisses me off. Um, it's, it's annoying. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, there's annoying things, but man, I really wish, uh, I, I really wish people would stop. Like, uh, it's almost like they're going to like, uh, if, if Instagram dies, it's going to be like artists fault for just like completely, like kind of like taking it, just being like making it uncool by saying how uncool it is all the time. But like all of those people literally make their living off of Instagram. So I don't, I don't know what the better option is right now. And it's a hell of an option compared to, I mean, come on. When I was in art school, like 10 years ago, they, you were just either in galleries or like you worked for like a graphic design firm. Like there were like, that was it. Like those are like your two roads. And when I moved to New York City to do um, to do art and like do music and everything, like their social media was like, I mean, it was there, but like, you didn't like use it really for that. You're like, here's my band page, but no one was like, oh, I, I have a Facebook page for my band. Like now, like my band's gonna be big. Like you still had to like go and tour, and it was the same with with painting and things like that. Like you know, I, I did art shows at like. Uh, in like Chelsea district and mm-hmm. like um, Greenpoint, I would always show in in Brooklyn and all of these places that I mean, sometimes it'd be like empty. Like nobody would even come to these places. And then Instagram came and artists kind of turned it into this thing that worked for them. And, uh, and just, I don't know, through years of that just really, really helped me kind of stay, stay on my feet, especially the, you know, it's crazy. The thing that, made that allowed me to make a living at this is a few years ago. I'd never ever meant to make a living doing art. I just was like, Oh, maybe I could make a few bucks on the side and like do art. Like when I get off work or whatever. Yeah. Um, and, uh, then Duran Duran like reposted me and, um, linked to me and they were like super cool about it. And, uh, it just, that's that's what did it. Like it got me so many sales through Duran Duran wow. that that it allowed me to make enough money to like pay my rent for like a month or two, and then I found the next thing that allowed me to do that. And it just then ever since then I've just been able to do it. But well, like they're the, the lucky they're ones. the thing <laughs> that started it. Yeah, they're they're the they're like it's funny like they're the band that that really really helped me. <laughs> Whether they know it or not, like they they really are the ones that like kind of a, they like pretty much gave me a job. Well, that's certainly uh, that's certainly cool. Um, have now some of your paintings are kind of like stained glass. Like, ha- have you actually done stained glass like making? No, I you know I used to be more interested in it, but like I you can't quite get the detail that like I do in stained glass. Yeah. Um. So I think it would just like kind of piss me off. And I also, I also try to make my, um, my stained glass paintings not look like stained glass. Like I want it, I want it to like invoke stained glass, but I also, if you go online and you look up pop culture, like stained glass, you're probably going to find a lot of things that look similar, like, like two stained glass windows. Um, 
and I don't want mine to look like that. Like I want, I want mine to look very specifically, um, like just my own kind of thing, um, to where people get that it's supposed to be stained glass, but like, I'm not interested in like making it look exactly like that because it will look because weird. then it kind of becomes <laughs> not my, my own thing anymore. Yeah. Um, and also it's not stained glass. So like, why, why try to make it look exactly like stained glass when like it's, it's not. So I, I mean, I, and I try to add things that kind of keep making it my own thing. Like, um, like if I ever see somebody do it, I mean, it's, it's, I know it's silly, but if I see people do a painting of someone and there's like little guys like on the shoulder, mm-hmm. I'm immediately like in my head, like, is that me? Like, did they, did they like see what I did? And then like, they did the same thing. Like, I don't know, but I, and I want other people to think that too. I, I want people to, to know exactly like my work when they see it. Yeah, I've seen the twins one with the, with Danny DeVito on Arnold's shoulder. I think yeah. that's the one I always I always see of yours around. I think you just posted that recently, but um, yeah, yeah. Um, the, the reason why I brought the stained glass stuff is because my grandfather did that, and he did he did Tiffany like style lamps and all that kind of stuff. That's he had, awesome. Like, and he did some like pieces and stuff. So I have like one of his last lamps that he did. Uh, but I remember like his his uh, like the basement was just covered in glass and stuff all over the place. Oh, it's crazy. I've... Yeah. I've talked to uh, people that do stained glass and people come up to my table at conventions and they're like, I do stained glass. And like, I would love to work with you on something. And if uh, they wanted to, to do that and then actually took it further, like I would probably be happy to kind of try that out, but I'm just not, um, I don't know. I really, I, my, my entire goal in life has always just been, I want to do, basically what I want to do. Like, I know there's restrictions on like, if, if like I'm doing a piece for like a certain band or something, you know, there's restrictions of like, I got to have it done by this day or whatever, but I can still wake up when I want. I can go to sleep when I want. I don't really have a boss. Like, like if, if I don't do it, like I'm not going to get fired. Like I, um, and my goal has always been that, like, even when I moved to New York city, I, um, I hated nine to five kind of jobs so much that I sold uh, comedy tickets and stuff in Times Square for years. <laughs> and those people are really annoying, but yeah. those people can literally do whatever they want at all times. And it's really good money, believe it or not. So like, just hand I would out just be out tickets. there. What's that? Well, is it so just to hand out concert tickets for comedy shows for like the no, Caroline? Sell them. I mean, oh, sell, sell them. Oh, they're okay. 20 bucks. They give you twenty bucks for the show, and you know if you're not a dickhead, you're being honest about the show. Like, I mean, I, I always made sure that I was honest to people about like actual comedians that would be there and stuff. But like for me, like you know, I would stand out there for a few hours, make some money from tourists and things, and then just leave and go do what I wanted. And there was nobody cared like what I did. And then from that, I I mean, I did that mainly so uh, like I could do paintings and music and stuff on the side as much as I wanted. And then eventually I got lucky enough to where like my art just took over and I didn't, I haven't been out there in like five years or something now. Um, but, uh, that sounds nice, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but, but like, just, just like, like for me, I just wanted, I, and I've always wanted to just be able to do what I want, like when I want, like that's my main, my main view of success for me at least is, is that, so, so for me, I don't, I don't know. I just really, um, I just really enjoy being able to do what I want, like whenever I want. Like I don't know how to say it. Yeah, I've I've tried doing that because I went to art school and then I for like graphic design and then kind of went more into web design. So then I, but I ended up I tried tried doing stuff like freelance, but. It's, it's so tough. So I'm now, you know, I've been at the same job for 15 years now. So doing like nine to five kind of thing, but doing web design, but I still do, I still manage to do a lot of stuff on the side of, you know, doing concert photography, my website. Now I'm doing a podcast, you know, so it's, it, you can do it. And now I, and I, I have a kid too. I got to juggle <laughs> as well. So it's, yeah. So, Oh dude, like I'm <laughs> like in the next few years, I know like I need to have a kid. And, 
And uh, well, you just got a it's lot. Of, yeah, you just got a lot the time to do it. Either when he when the kid goes to sleep and you know at eight nine o'clock. Yeah, when it's, you do what's some rough work. because I'm I I mean I I just got engaged in like December Congrats. and uh, and my fiance is also an artist and uh, she she's probably the main reason I um I do this honestly full time is is she's the one that really kind of pushed me. And when I, when I met her, I was doing art, but not like I do now. And she was kind of like, why are you like wasting your time? Like you should just actually only do this. And she really pushed me. And then we kind of push each other. And then we do conventions together as two separate businesses, but kind of like combine our tables. Yeah. Um, but uh, I know, I mean, you know, we're like in our thirties. So I'm like, I, I feel this pressure that like, I didn't, um, I've never felt before because I've always wanted a kid, but I've never wanted a kid right now. But soon, that right now, like, just had that has to come, or else it's going to be too freaking late. Yeah, <laughs> like I'm constantly it's pretty much I'm what happened constantly with me. Constantly, like, oh shit. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty much happened with me. It was like I had my first kid, uh, well, only kid right now. Um, when I was, what was it? He's three and a half, so three and a half years ago. So I was like 36, 37, you know. So when I had my first kid. So you still got some time. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, there's, I'm sure there's a little bit of time. But for me, I'm like, I really want to buy a house, which is something I didn't. I was like, why would any idiot ever buy a house? Like, that was like my I'm view for years. I was living in, uh, what's that? I'm still renting. <laughs> I, I mean, well, so am I. Yeah. Um, and uh, my whole life, I mean, I lived in Brooklyn. And when I moved to Brooklyn, everything was really cheap. Like, my rent in, like, uh, like. Williamsburg area was like 600 bucks a month. Yeah. Uh -huh. Um, which I can't even, <laughs> I can't even imagine that now. Like that's insane. Um, but when I moved there, it was that much. And I moved there because it was really cheap. And, uh, at the time I'm like, why would anybody ever want to buy a house? It's so expensive, but now rent is so insanely expensive yeah. that I'm like, I feel stupid renting. And I'm at the point now where I'm like, I want to buy a house. Uh, I probably need to have a kid soon, or else it's going to be too late, and I'll be I'll be upset if. Per, I mean, having a kid is not for everybody. I completely understand yeah. it, but for me, I've always wanted a kid. I I love kids. I don't find them annoying. I think they're great. Um, half the shit I make is for kids. Yeah. So, um, I mean, it's like grown up versions of things I loved when I was a kid. So it just makes sense for me. And my fiance has always wanted to. Uh, have a kid, and uh, well, I, think you I know we want there. to. I think, yeah, I think you're going to be having a kid in a couple of years. <laughs> yeah, so like that, <laughs> buying a house, it's like all of that, all right, like, it's like literally in the past two years, I've started to think about that for the first time, and I'm like, oh, shit, like, I got to do this, I got to do this, like, crazy shit that, like, I, I don't feel ready to do, but I, you know, everybody, everybody that's done it is like, you never feel ready to do it. You just got to do it yes. and get through it. And I'm yeah. like, well, I'm like, that doesn't sound like fun, but like, <laughs> I don't know what the other option is just to yeah. not do it. And I, now that, that makes me sad. Like, I don't, um, I, I personally don't want to be like, like in my forties and then look back and be like, I wish I, I really wish I had a kid or, you know, or whatever. Um, so I don't know, man. <laughs> There'll That's, be that moment. You mentioned your something. kid and it yeah. triggered me. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I didn't. I was kind of like, in, if it in maybe one of my twenties, like I didn't want a kid, and then once you read the the right person, then it's kind of your mind changes. I, mean, I still don't like other kids. I like my own kid. That's why I made a T shirt that says like, "I hate your kid, <laughs> I hate your child." Yeah. <laughs> um, well, dude, I'm like, I'm stoked. I'm like really excited about having a kid on so many levels. Where I'm like, I can't wait to like to put the kid like, you know, to sleep with like a bedtime story. And I can't wait to like show it these, these like, uh, little places. Like I, I take like my nephew to like Sesame place and like, um, yeah. like a few other places. And I love it. I'm like, yo, there's rules. I'm like living like a short, like a child's life again through like this kid's eyes. And like it rules on every level. And I love it. But then just the fact that like, I can't just like, I have a kid and then I can't just like leave the house and walk to like the corner store. <laughs> it just yeah. kills me. Like just like, it's definitely like what the hell am I going to do? It's, it's an adjustment. 
Yeah, of course, of course. Like my car constantly smells like puke because my kid throws up in the car all the time. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> the other day, I was um, I was upstate New York the other day, like in the Catskills, yeah. and we were in this coffee shop, and this uh, little kid is just looking at me, um, while like it's over the mom's shoulder, and the kid just throws up all over the mom's back. Oh and, yeah. And she didn't notice, and I'm like, should I? should I say something? And then I just didn't <laughs> like, I'm like, what do I do? So I just, I, I just like mistakenly, not on purpose, like allowed this mom to like yeah. walk around and puke all over her back probably for like the rest of the day. I mean, what but, is like, she going to do though? I mean, it's like, she's probably why, like, yeah, well, I didn't it. know what to say. I'm like, oh, yeah. should I go up and be like, yo, your kid just like puked all over your back. Like I, I honestly didn't know what to do. Yeah. So, and then, and then, you know, every time I see something like that right now, like something in my mind gets like triggered to where I'm like, God, man, that's going to be me at some point. Like, and like, I, I really like, like my clothes too. So like, if I'm like wearing a jacket, I love, and like my kid pukes on it, I'm going to like wreck my day. Yeah, like, that, I'll feel that, like, that happened. Be, like this little thing ruined my day. Like I'll be so upset. That actually happened recently. And my son, uh, we were driving somewhere and I had, uh, the car locked so I, I and he's like oh so I, so I pulled over we like finally got to where we were going and I go and like try to open the door and the door was still locked I'm like fuck so so then I'm like <laughs> then I finally get in, t- inside and just as I start reaching it to unbuckle him he barfs all over my pea coat I'm like oh oh my god man <laughs> oh yeah dude kills me that's some shit you can't like throw in the, in, like, the washing machine either like no that uh, was a dry cleaner yeah, yeah that was a dry clean run um yeah having it having a kid i mean i obviously don't know what it's like yet but i'm very very observant of it like i've been thinking about it for a long time what it would be like and i feel like it's just like a constant like comedy routine of like oh yeah like, did this can... just happen like did did we just like get to the store and like my kid has no shoes like i mean just things that like parents have to go through that you would never think of yeah, I can um, I can tell you hours and hours, parent. hours and hours are worth of, <laughs> of gross things that, <laughs> like exactly. just eating shit go. off the floor. Oh you know, yeah, your kid like pisses on your face or something while you're changing it. Yeah, like, yeah, sure. shit, yeah, <laughs> all of it. And it's like great, and now it's like well, can't can't wait. It's coming soon. So, <laughs> um, all right, what's we should? It's probably getting a little late for you. Uh, probably, yeah, whatever, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, so I mean. Are you in? So you've been doing album covers and stuff like that for, or, or doing album artwork or anything like that for bands, or are you just kind of doing just posters? So I do, I do posters, but I, you know, no one's approached me yet for um, album covers or album artwork. I mean, I've had a few, I've had a few bands, I guess, approach me for it, but they're like, I mean, you know, every every amazing band is like a local no name band at some point. So yeah. I'm not trying to like say anything bad about those bands, but like. A lot of them are like, hey, like, you know, we have like a hundred followers on Facebook. Like, would you like to do like our album cover? And and I'm just not like, I mean, they're not really looking to pay or anything either. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm not really like, no, I'm okay. Well, I mean, if they, I <laughs> guess that. if they do I mean, pay, <laughs> it's worth, worth doing I it. Mean, it yeah. It's different, but it's just really like, like for me... Like, like for me, it's it's never really about money. It's more like, do I want to make this thing? Yeah, so like, that's true. That's why, like, like if somebody um, if somebody approaches me and is like, you know, we're not going to pay much, but um, like we would love for you to to do this like mural or this poster or whatever, and it's something that like challenges me and something that gets me excited, um, then I I won't even really ask. I'll just do it and. and um, that's probably like my favorite thing to do is just uh, only things that like kind of invoke like any kind of uh, excitement in me. Yeah. But there's plenty of times where like people are like, like I, I mean, for instance, like dead mouse was like, you want to do something like for, for me, like I'm dead mouse. And I'm just like, <laughs> no, <laughs> like, no, I'm okay. I'm nothing, nothing against dead mouse. It just doesn't like, I'm not like a, I'm not a fan. I don't, I just don't, um, you should, just didn't excite me. Like should, that's that's really all there is to it. You should check out my fr- uh, my friend's band. They're a new wave ska band called Rubeboard George. Um, oh, dude, would... I know. Um, I I know some of the people in that band. Okay, you probably know Jenny. Yeah. And the, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. She's great, man. I love her. Yeah, so I mean, you should probably do their artwork next time. I, I've done all their merch in the past, so it's uh, 
but I, I'm sure they would like would like your style. I think they love their. Uh, that well, I know. Well, I know she. Um, she has a ton of my stuff hanging yeah. up in her, uh, in her in her place somewhere. But uh, yeah, she's. I mean, I don't know. I I, I love those guys, and I I loved. Uh, I mean, I played with Hub City Stompers like probably like 15 years ago constantly. Yeah. Um, and you know, which is I think isn't half the band. Yeah, isn't half of Rude Boy George Hub City Stompers. Yeah, now they are. Yeah, because it was a they changed the lineup, so they had some some of the members come over there. Yeah, um, but yeah, so I, they would probably would love something that that you can create. If I'm sure, because that one that one poster you did you did last year, that one was like the most popular one that I've seen viral wise the saturday morning new wave poster when it's like all the artists from the like new wave era and i was like that i wish i bought that when i was at comic-con when i saw you <laughs> but i'm like yeah. i don't think my wife would have like allowed me to hang it up anywhere maybe my maybe at work <laughs> but <laughs> yeah well that's man dude that shit took me you know that that started as i just wanted to make a backdrop for new york comic-con because oh. everybody everybody at new york comic-con is like here's my superheroes and here's like Here's yeah. the thing I'm a fan of, and this is what I made of it. Um, so everywhere you look, it's Marvel this and DC this and et cetera, and that's great. But like for me, um, my superheroes, you know, were always a lot of these new wave stars and everything. So I wanted to make my own kind of backdrop of all these people, and then it just it just kept going. Like I became obsessed with it to where for like days I would be up until like 3 a.m. every night, just like adding people to it, wow. and. And that, it was never even supposed to be a print, and now it's like when it's probably like my most popular thing. Yeah, um, it was awesome. And yeah. Uh, yeah, I didn't expect it. I didn't really know. It was one of those things where I was like, "Yeah, I'm just going to draw a few of these people and like have like a backdrop of these guys back here." And then it just, I, I just was like, "Well, I had these 20 people, so I got to add these 20 more people." And it just kind of kept growing until I ran out of space and was like, "All right, I got to stop now. Like New York Comic Con's coming up." You should do a uh, like limited ska of like ska musicians. I think all my ska friends would love it. <laughs> That'd be pretty crazy, man. Like I don't um, cuz there are some like I don't know. there are some iconic, you know, there's Dickie Barrett of Boston's like, oh, God, like of course. You want to you want to talk to me about ska? Yeah, like, yeah. But... I uh good good god. Like um I was like I'm just being in a ska band for years. I um I mean I was a drummer and I I was obsessed with like everything. Like I have a uh, certain tattoos that maybe I regret now, but like I have a, like I have an arch bandits tattoo. Um, like, I mean, I was obsessed with uh, like real big fish and all those guys. And then as I've gotten older, I've, I've kind of turned away from most of those groups, but I still really enjoy like the, like the specials I love and yeah. madness and, um, Scott lights and uh, the beat. I don't know a lot, a lot of the more like two tone Scott yeah. type of uh, type of groups. Yeah, so do a two tone two tone series. <laughs> Maybe at some point. I mean, it's really yeah. it's really about the characters of each band, and you know, there's definitely some uh, some characters, I guess. Yeah, in the ska world. I don't know though. It's a, I'm afraid that like the print. If I if I were to do a, like a ska print, for instance, like I'm afraid it would just be like. They they all kind of look the same on a print together. Like at least when I was doing the new wave one, like you have Adam Ant next to like Grace Jones. Yeah. Like you have like people that are like completely different characters. But like you have Aaron, what, what's his name from Real Big Fish? Aaron next Barrett. To, yeah, yeah. Next to like uh, you know the dude from like Less Than Jake. Next to the, I mean it would just be like. I mean I know I I mean I, I know, know what they look like and they're like oh it's different and it's who's who of of ska. I mean I can, I can give you a list. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, if not, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, I always, I always loved, uh, I always loved ska. I just, I don't know. I, I was a huge Planet Smashers fan, and they haven't played all, here all that ages. stuff. Yeah. I mean, I, I still listen to ska, so it's. I, I, I mean, I still, yeah, I still listen to some of it, but like, there's, like, the last time I bought like a real big fish album was probably like 2000, like five. Like, I, and it's not even anything against them. It's just like, yeah, you know, I had so many albums. And like I said earlier, a lot of these bands just kind of start making the same album over and over again. Yeah, um, some have, yeah. And I just kind of drop off. Like, then it's not, like, you know, I mean, it's hard. It's hard to keep changing 
well, your this- sound, especially, you know, when you've found something that works and, you know, you can make a living doing it. And people want to hear that sound. So that's you know, actually the case with the specials. Good at it. That's actually the case with the new specials album because they just released a new one with Terry Hall and, and it's, I know, yeah. And you, know, you know, completely I different. It. <laughs> I hate to say, I didn't really like it. Like, I didn't like, and I didn't, uh, it, it's growing it's, it's on me, though. The songs didn't do anything. Like, if it, even if it was not ska in any way, and the songs were just, like, really good, then I I don't care. I would have loved it. Like, I thought I thought the Aquabats, um, I don't even know if it's their last album, but the last, uh, it was it Charge by Aquabats? That was, um, no, that wasn't their last one. That's not their last one, but yeah. it's the um, last one I really got into by them. Okay. And they completely went a different way. It's almost like, power pop like Devo. Nerd, nerd rock. Um, yeah, it's like Devo, yeah. yeah. And I loved it. I loved that album. Like it didn't bother me at all that they stopped doing ska. Like with it because the album still ruled to me. Like I was still yeah. like these are still really fun songs. Um, yeah with the specials but then it was bands like, like RX Bandits and they stopped they, doing ska and I just yeah. didn't like their their songs anymore. Yeah. And with the, with the specials it was I liked the songs and the lyrics of it. I just didn't it wasn't stuff I can really dance to. You know, it's yeah. quotes. and it's like, and it's like a few of them were spoken word song songs. Like I listened to it once, and it's like, all right, it's, I I got it. It's an important song, but not something I would listen to. But there are some songs on it that I would say about half the half the album I like. Uh, but I was yeah. expecting something different. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I mean, what's so what's next? So after all the holidays are kind of you did Christmas and Halloween and well Halloween Christmas and uh, Valentine's Day. I mean, what holiday kind of thing are you going to be doing next for your artwork? Do you know what? <laughs> I, I didn't Day. ever mean to. Uh, I didn't ever mean to fall into the holiday thing, but then it just it just started happening that way, and, and yeah. I have fun doing it. Um, I hate to like kind of announce this on this, but like um, for my Christmas ornaments, this is probably the last year I'll do it. What? Um, <laughs> and uh, Valentine's, I'll just keep doing because they're I don't know they're just fun to me. They're kind of like a tradition now of something I do. But like with the Christmas ornaments, I mean, I mean it's so stupid, but I'm like, it's gotta be I hard to like, print uh, and make them, right? Oh man, dude, they're so hard to make. Yeah, and. I go through like factories and things and like the factories will get them wrong and like send me like hundreds of them that are just like bad. And then I can't like sell them. And then like, I, it's, it's nuts. You like an it's, intern. <laughs> oh dude. Like every, every year um, for the holidays uh, we're like, why don't we have somebody working for us yet? Like, but then, but then it dies. Like it, for me, um, once Valentine's Day comes, like from here to like Halloween is just dead for me. Yeah. Um, like in my in my shop, I mean, I still make sales probably like every day, but they're like they're like little sales, um, and it still helps me enough to like kind of like keep me going. But it's not like you know I'm rushing to the post office every day like I am in those few months. So I mean, during that dead time, you're just kind of thinking of new ideas for like Valentine's and. Well, and I'm working. Things. I mean, uh, during the, these times, like I'm working on uh, just other like art for other people, pretty okay. much. Okay. Um, like I'm doing um, tons of gallery stuff and things like that right now, and. You're gonna be at the and, comic. Uh, you're gonna be yeah. at your Comic Con again this year. Dude, I hope so, man. It's it's really hard to get on. Oh, really? Like, I don't ever like to promise that I'll be on it. Like, I'm supposed to be on it. I've talked to them about it, and uh, I'm excited about it. But like, I don't want to be like yes until like I'm I actually pay and I'm like I'm on the thing. Yeah. Yeah, I only st- I only started going to Comic Con like two years ago, or t- yeah, two or three years ago, because I. And I, I'm like, and I got in for free because I got like a press pass. So I was like, oh sweet. So I went to just take pictures of cosplay, and and it's it's I can't like, it's so packed half the time. <laughs> it's like it's so hard oh, to walk man, around. Dude, the New yeah. York Comic Con is a completely different uh, monster than any other con that I do. Um, and I've been going to conventions probably since like uh, I don't know, like 2003 or something. Okay. 
Wow. And just mainly, mainly like horror movie ones because I've always like yeah. one of my other biggest loves have always been like like ridiculous horror movies from the '80s and stuff too. Um, and I've always loved those. But it's it's you know it's changed a lot. Like when I used to go. You would go and even the biggest star there, you'd pay like 20 bucks. Yeah, no. And like, like, you'd wait in line for like 30 minutes, pay 20 bucks, get a picture with them at their table. Um, And this is before camera phones. You know, you like, you have to like get somebody to like help you work your camera. Yeah. (laughs) And, uh, and I mean, for, for years, I would just do that. And then honestly, the thing that, um, the thing that happened was honestly just the Walking Dead. Like, I'll never forget when, the walking dead guys showed up and all of a sudden there are more people than I've ever seen at a convention. And it was the first time they had like Norman Reedus and people, it was probably like season three of like walking dead. Yeah. That was like and, at the uh, height, height of it. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then suddenly all the prices went up and I, I actually think it's because of walking dead. Like it, it completely shot the prices from like 20 bucks to like 80 bucks. And not only is it like 80 bucks for a photo now, like you have to like, pay for the autograph and shit like separately half the time so it's just insane I don't know. It, yeah it gets hard i don't know i don't know how these kids do it because i would show up in high school with like 60 bucks get like some autographs like also get into the place and like that would be it that wouldn't even get me like that wouldn't even get me like in now yeah so, what's it like i don't know how 60, some of these other kids 75 dollars 80 dollars or something for like a couple days for like near Cal- so, for near Comic Con, like how much are the tickets? Like, isn't it like fifty dollars? I'm day? pretty sure it's I'm pretty sure it's more than eighty bucks for like one day. Oh, I don't even think you can get into more than one day into New York Comic Con anymore. And it's like some crazy system where you have to like like reserve your spot and then get, like first thing in the morning to do it, just to to get online to go. Oh buy yeah, a ticket. dude, it's nuts. It's so you haven't gone to San, San Diego yet? No, man, dude, that's. <laughs> San Diego, at this point, you pretty much have to, like, I don't even know how you get onto that. I mean, be a movie studio. I know, <laughs> dude, some of the biggest artists I know, like, can't even, can't even get in the door for that, like, at all. I hear it's such a clusterfuck, though, so it's kind of almost better just to do, New- uh, like, stick with New York, I guess. Yeah, I mean, dude, I would love to get on to, uh, San Diego, but when it comes to them, like the the big artists that are on there have been on there since like the beginning of it. Oh, okay. Um, like I mean, you know, I'm I'm around these conventions like almost every week. I know so many artists that are like well known artists, and like they don't even get a response. It's not even about like how big you are in like the art world or anything. It's just like. They they won't even they won't even look at you like they won't even see that you emailed them. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Well, I think we're uh, had a really good chat. I think let's uh, call it a day. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Um, so, what? Where can people find you? Uh, find your artwork and all that kind of stuff. So you can find my stuff if you look up uh, M Linamart, which is just. M L I N E H A M art dot com. Um, or it's just Emily Mart on Instagram and Facebook and things like that too. Um, or if you just Google my name, it'll, it'll come yeah. up. You just Google <laughs> Matthew Winham. But, uh, but yeah, that's, that's where you can find So, me. So what other, um, are you going to be at any conventions anytime soon that people can stop by at your booth? Yeah, I'll be, um, I'll be at monster mania in uh cherry hill new jersey um i think it's the second weekend of march which that's my favorite convention of the year i just um i don't know i just love it like everything about it is still feels really old school like it's not like massive like um like other comic cons it's like in a hotel and uh ah, man i just i just love that one like i get excited like I'm excited for it now and it's not even for a few weeks. Like I, I get so stoked for it. And then, um, the week after that, we do a horror hound, uh, Cincinnati. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, and you got some really cool guests at these. You have like Christina Ricci. And, oh, nice. Um, uh, you can ask her about her brother being the, in big wig. <laughs> oh, dude, that's crazy. I, I, actually, I never knew that. That's nuts. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's interesting. That's a good little piece of knowledge that I never knew. Well, you didn't know that until just now? 
No, yeah, I've never heard of that. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think I think her, yeah, I think it was her brother. Yeah. Wow. Um, all right, that's that's cool. So you got some. You're, you'll, you'll be keeping busy, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, definitely. All right. Uh, yeah. Have a good one. I'll, I'll talk to you later. All right, bud. Great talking right. to you. Thanks. Right, bye bye.